guys and welcome back if you're new here my name's sean and today we're going to be talking about border collies so this is border collie 101 everything you need to know about the breed and if you like this video guys hit that like button leave us a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already And guys, before we get into this video, what I want to say is this is based on research and my own experience and as someone who owns working sheepdogs. And not all of this is relevant to pets. Some of it will only be relevant to working dogs. I will try and point that out, uh, some of the differences. And, and that brings us on to uh, how do I feel about Border Collies being pets. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is even when you've got the best of breeding, not every pup in the litter is going to be, uh, be able to become a working dog and some will fail out in training as well. So there is a place for pet border collies, but they're definitely not a dog for everyone. And it's definitely a dog that you have to really consider whether it fits with your lifestyle before getting one. This off with a little bit of history about the breed so that we can better understand the breed we have today. So the first thing is the word collie actually predates border collies by quite a bit. We've had different types of collie type dogs throughout history and they've been very popular as herding dogs. So the border collie that we have today, the first ever uh, official border collie was Old Hemp and his owner was a man called Adam Talfer. And Old Hemp was born in 1893. And Old Hemp was a product of the collie type dogs that they had at that time that were very popular in England and Scotland. And Old Hemp was bred from one dog who had extremely high drive and instincts and another dog who had less drive and instincts but was much more friendly and biddable with other people. The Border Collie was also bred to be a fairly hardy breed of dog which was fairly easy to look after uh, in some senses but at the same time was bred to be a absolute pinnacle working dog which had the energy to run for eight hours a day and extremely good instincts around stock. Okay guys so let's talk about care. So as I said a moment ago the Border Collie was bred to be a fairly hardy dog. Let's talk about coat and coat care. So the Border Collie uh, has a fairly hardy coat. They look after themselves pretty much. You'll see my dogs get pretty muddy. Echo's pretty muddy right now. Kate is. They were both out running in mud this morning and I don't uh, need to bath them or anything like that. So the Border Collie has natural oils in its coat, which protect the coat. So all you really need to do is let the dogs dry out and brush them and pretty much everything will brush out. The only time I would ever bath them is if they were covered in something sticky or something that's not gonna come out like engine oil or a uh, cat poop, something like that. I'd maybe bath them, but most things will just brush out. They will occasionally get knots in their fur and most of that can also be avoided with brushing. Behind the ears it's inevitable to get small knots and you just cut them out or tease them out as you find them. But generally they will look after their own coats. So guys, now we're going to talk about nutrition. So I don't feed raw and uh, I do give them raw treats, have no problem with raw food, but it's just impossible for me to store that amount of raw food here safely without it going off. And uh, flash frozen raw food, as soon as it gets flash frozen, most of the uh, nutritional value uh, gets killed out of it anyway. Most working dogs you'll find will be fed on kibble. And I'll show you what I use. Hey, Stormy Girl. So here we have uh, Dr. John's. It's made by Gilbertson Page. They actually have three ranges of food. This stuff is quite affordable, believe it or not, um, and it's just standard working dog food. This is what we have Echo on. This is the high energy hypogenic, so it's pretty good for young dogs. We have the Dr. John's Gold, the regular working dog food, and Storm and Kate both get that. Like I say, guys, it is a fairly affordable food. I tried lots of different dog foods, lots of different kibbles back in the day, and this just kept my dogs in the best condition. And when it comes to feeding routines, I, my dogs get treats throughout the day, but they only get one large meal in the afternoon. And that is because our dogs' digestive systems are very different from ours. 
and uh, dogs in the wild will successfully hunt every two days on average so dogs digestive systems work a lot slower than ours and the border collie is a breed that has generally been fed in this style one large meal a day since uh, the breed began so that is what the digestive systems are set up for feeding them more often than that can actually push food through the digestive system faster than their body can uh, properly absorb what it needs out of the food and you can actually end up with a dog who is struggling to put on weight from feeding too often so guys now let's look at living conditions so uh, my dogs live in kennels well uh, storm and echo live out here in kennels Kate's been living in the house this winter. Um, it's not super important for pet dogs, what I'm about to say, but for working dogs, uh, for these dogs to be out working for eight hours a day, their bodies have to be prepared for that. Their coats have to form properly. And a dog which is living outside in kennels, its coat and its body is reactive to the environment that it's living in. So their coats will form a lot more fully than Kate's will this winter. With Kate living inside, her coat will not form up to the same level of these two. And she will not be able to withstand the cold for as long as the other two, which are living outside. And Border Collies are a breed that were bred to live outside. And again, in working lines, uh, they have absolutely been kept that way up until the present day. So they do prefer to live outside. And like I say, if you're in a, uh, if you've got a pet border collie, that is not good advice for you. You can do what you want. Uh, it, as long as your dog isn't going to be out in the cold for eight, 10 hours at a time, it's not going to matter whether they live inside or out. But for working dogs, it is better for their coats and for their bodies if they are, uh, living in the environment that they're working in. Having said that, if you are using kennels, there is a right way to use a kennel and a wrong way. A kennel is not an excuse to put your dog out in the back in your garden, just forget about it. Uh, dogs can actually get something called kennel madness from being in a kennel too long. So a kennel is a safe space for your dog to sleep overnight and somewhere that you can uh, put your dog when you're off the property. But you still need to be spending as much time bonding with your dog and providing your dog stimulation. You can't just leave your dog in a kennel to oh, So the Border Collie is generally quite a hardy breed. Now, here is what was gonna put most people off getting a Collie and the reason why most people probably shouldn't have a Collie. Border Collies require a lot of time, physical exercise and mental stimulation. So these dogs were bred to work for a long period of time. They love running about, they have lots of energy. They're not gonna be happy with a quick walk and left in your apartment all day. These are dogs which need a lot of physical exercise. It's not just physical exercise, these dogs also need a lot of mental exercise. So uh, if you, you could walk a Border Collie for eight hours a day, it won't get tired. You'll actually tire it out quicker with mental exercise. These dogs crave life learning. They crave, uh, they crave mental stimulation. And if you're not giving that to them, they'll get bored. And when they get bored, that's when you get a lot of destructive behaviors. So you really need to be spending time with your dog, challenging your dog, giving your dog things to figure out, things to do, new experiences, if you want to keep them in a pet home. And you have to have a lot of time for that. And that also has to be given with the physical uh, the physical side of that as well so a border collie really is a lot of work to take on and that translates into my next point the border collie will also take up a lot of your time if you're looking for one as a pet and it's a good reason not to get one if you're out working every day these aren't dogs that you can just leave at home uh, for extended periods of time uh, they will develop behavioral problems when they become bored when they become under ex exercised and they can even become reactive and quite nasty because of it. And these dogs, they're also highly intelligent and they like to use that intelligence. So if that, if your dog's getting bored, it's gonna use that intelligence on how to discover what the inside of your couch looks like. Border Collie can be a good pet dog, but it really isn't a dog for everybody. It really has to be a dog that you're gonna commit and spend a lot of time with. And although the Border Collie is generally quite a healthy dog, that doesn't mean it uh, can't get problems. Some border collies will develop problems generally with age, uh, but as a breed, they are generally fairly fit and healthy. 
The average age of a Border Collie online says about 10. In my experience, it's 12 to 14. Now we're going to uh, talk about something else that is uh, specific to me and working dogs again. But all my dogs, all three of my dogs are complete, which means none of them have been neutered or spayed. And you will find that this is basically common practice amongst working dogs. Uh, neutering and spaying dogs when they're young can change their uh, instincts and things. And it's a lot to recover from when you're also in sheepdog training. So we just don't do it young. And personally, I don't see any reason to give a dog a medical procedure unless there is a medical reason for that procedure. And that's just the way I see it. I don't think anyone's right or wrong for neutering the dogs. I definitely agree with neutering in shelters or in stray dogs to, uh, or for reasons of population control or to stop unwanted breeding. Here, I can be fairly responsible with my dogs, keep them separate when they are in heat and just generally make sure that they don't breed with each other. Here in my situation, I don't bother with that. I'm quite responsible when my dogs are in heat and I make sure that uh, no accidents happen. And I'm happy to do that. I understand if you're in a pet home, you haven't got kennels, you haven't got the ability to separate dogs out, definitely get them neutered. Don't just be having puppies willy nilly. Uh, but again, I don't really see any reason to neuter my dogs unless there is a genuine medical reason for that. And I understand a lot of people are going to say, but there's certain risks of certain diseases and cancers. Yes, but there's also certain risks and higher chances of getting cancer from having uh, your dog neutered or spayed. And one in three dogs uh, will experience weight problems after being neutered or spayed. And for a pet dog, that doesn't matter. But for a working dog, extra weight on the dog is extra strain on the heart and body. So we generally wouldn't get it done with a working dog unless it had to be done for some sort of medical reason. Okay guys, I feel like this video is probably going to be long enough at this point. I could probably talk for hours and I'll probably cut a lot of this stuff that I've said out to try and get the video down to a reasonable level. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to hit that like button, leave us a comment, tell us what you thought about this, whether you'd like more videos like this. And if you like uh, content about dogs, sheep dogs, farming or general rural life in Scotland, subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, that'll do for today's video.